Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today are 10 small military survival items that we can place inside of our kit. Stand by. All right, so for that first item, as small components or items or kit items we can put in our military survival kit, one of those items is a military pilot survival flask. This is just a small canteen. It's 16 ounces or half a liter. Normally, military canteens are gonna be like this, where they have 32 ounces or one US quarter, one liter of water in them. And typically, what we do with these is that we have our iodine tablets, and we're gonna put two tablets in every one US quart or liter. And that's how we treat the normal canteen full of water that we pull from the scummy nasty swamp. But with this being just a half liter or half quart, 16 ounces means we only need one water tablet. It means we're gonna have to fill up more frequently and stay closer to water sources, but it's much smaller sleeker we can put it in our kit take care of it protect it drink from it and then with enough water tablets we can treat water and stay hydrated in our survival situation a smaller item that we can carry as part of our kit to take down material make our way through the jungle is a small bush knife or a motang knife this is the smaller version of the military jungle machete it's about six or seven inches shorter the Motang knife is about 18 inches in total blade length, and we improvised a sheath out of 100 mile an hour tape and cardboard, but it's a nice little blade to get up close and personal with those vines, other vegetation, shrubs, and things that we're gonna have to hack down in a jungle environment or swampland environment. And so we have a good knuckle guard here just for that purpose because that debris is gonna be cut away. We help protect our knuckles due to the shortened version of this blade. But it's still a great blade to have to process material as well. And it's a fire starter, 100% carbon steel, means we can take a hard rock or a piece of chert and drive sparks onto fine tinder material like char, and then get a fire going that way. And we can take a file to the edge, sharpen it up. A great compact blade to have is part of our survival kit. All right, this may look like just normal paracord, but there are actually several different types of paracord. We have type one paracord, which has one inner strand. It's about 90 pound tensile strength or so. We have type three, which is 550 cord, that normal seven inner strands with the sheath equaling 550 pounds of tensile strength. And then we have type four, which is approximately 750 pounds of tensile strength because inside, instead of seven strands, we actually have 11 strands. So this is a great way to get extra cordage into our survival kit. As you can see there, there are way more than seven strands. So we have four extra strands inside, giving us a lot of extra cordage for traps, snares, camp craft, field craft, putting tools together, whatever we need. So having type four, 11 strand paracord compared to type three or even type one paracord gives us a lot more versatility, a lot more cordage in a smaller kit. I'm about to give you guys flashbacks. All right, so some of you guys may recognize this. This is standard issue when I came in and for many years before me. Every soldier would get two or three or four of these. I think I've got about seven dozen sitting in the uh, garage somewhere. And what this is, is just a nylon strap to tie down ammo cans or equipment inside military vehicles. Every soldier would have a few of these. That way when they stepped up to a military vehicle, they could secure their rucksack, they could secure ammo cans, equipment, whatever, to the inside or outside of that vehicle. That way that vehicle can move safely. Then all they have to do is undo this, take down their equipment, pack these up in their rucksack, and they're good to go. We can use this as part of our small military survival kit or carry something like this with us to aid us in camp craft as well as a little bit of field craft. Now I'm gonna use my burn bowl log here to simulate a tree. One technique that we can use with this strap is as a suspension. We can use this strap to suspend our gear, we suspend our shelters, and it's very, very simple. So on one end we have our flat hook, the other we have our loop, and then our actual lever right here. What we do is we take this strap, put it around our anchor point, and then before that we have our little carabiner as part of our rope bridge. We can take that carabiner, put it through the strap around our anchor point, take that flat hook, put it on the latch, and then take out the slack, making this tight. We flip that latch down, nice and tight. We have that carabiner that we can turn to a 90 degree from that anchor point or this tree, and now we can actually 
hang or suspend our rucksack up off the ground if we're in a swampy environment or use it for shelter craft. But you can see the use for a simple old school military tie down strap like this, just keeping a couple in our kit to help create a shelter or get our gear up off the ground. And to get it undone, same process as before. We just lift up, everything comes loose, add some slack, take off the hook, remove the carabiner, remove the strap from the anchor, and we're good to go. Old school, baby. All right, a smaller survival item that we can place inside of our kit that we can use for a variety of purposes is camouflage ace wrap or bandage wrap. This is the sticky stuff that we use to wrap around uh, injuries or around wounds and conceal those bandages, help stabilize them or secure them in place so they don't fall off. But these have a lot of different uses as well besides just medical aid. We can use it for field craft. One way we can use this for field craft is something my snipers used to do with their rifles, at least the uh, M110. What they would do is take this wrap, they would put padding on top of the stock at just the right height and then wrap this with the ace bandage so they get that good cheek to stock weld. Same sight picture every time when they're looking down their scope making a shot. So just another technique for a very small item we can place inside our survival kit. All right, something really small, almost paper thin, that we can place inside any survival kit, especially a medical kit, is gonna be that burn dressing, that petroleum gauze strip dressing. Now all this dressing is, is just cotton infused with Vaseline to treat burns. Burns are a common type of injury, even in the wilderness survival setting, dealing with fires, and so having a way to treat burns, still important, multifunctional, but we can actually use this as a tinder source to get a fire going, ironically enough. All we do is find the opening of the package, tear it open, it looks something like that. We can use it for a burn dressing, but we could also cut off a small hook, save the rest for an actual injury, and use the small wad right here as tinder. One thing to keep your eye on with any military surplus or gear that you may come across are small little stoves that come in maybe foreign or different ration packs. And it's just a simple stove. I like to hang on to these or pick these up when I see them because they're portable, they're light. They often come with fuel in their own fire starters. We just take this stove, fold out the walls, bend down the legs, and then we can fold in these little wings, stand it up, take our fuel right here. This is a gel fuel. Just drop it right in the center. It sits flush. Once we have the fuel in the stove, we've torn off the top, we're ready to go. We take out the matches that come with this stove set, strike one up, light our fuel, and then we can place our canteen cup with water on top or our food that may be in a can on top. Heat up that food, heat up that hot drink. This is a great little kit to have. So always keep your eyes peeled for small stoves like this that come in different ration packs. Recommend picking one of these up as an emergency stove to have for survival. So this is the small IFAC on my shooter's belt. And one thing that I've replaced inside of it are the combat shears. I replace these combat shears, and you may be thinking to yourself, self, those look like normal combat shears. And they kind of are. There's one big difference, the size. These larger combat shears, the normal ones you're going to get, can fit inside of this kit, but it's a little bit bulky. So if we have smaller IFACs like this, individual first aid kits, especially on our shooter belt, we can go ahead and decrease the size as well as the weight with smaller combat shears. We have those small combat shears or penny cutters you can go right inside this kit. They're not going to poke out or damage the packaging. We can wrap it up and then shove our kit right back in that pouch on our shooter's belt and we're good to go. Having pen and paper is still really important in a survival kit. We can do a lot of things with a pen and paper. We can obviously take notes, leave messages for search and rescue, we can recreate solar compasses using this. We can keep a log of our distance and direction as we travel. So we can use the Paul method to get out of a situation and walk out and self rescue. So having notebook and some sort of writing stick is still important. And we can get away with having a really small kit like this, which is a small write in the rain notebook where we can keep our notes, write down different things, think about our life choices, and then have a writing stick of some sort to jot all that down is still really important. You can see how small these items are. They can actually fit inside a small survival tin. And so just having these as part of a really small kit still gives us the option of leaving messages, writing things down, and taking notes to help us survive.
All right, guys, that does it for this video. A very down and dirty quick video today on 10 small military survival items you can place inside of a kit or add to our kit that are easy for us to carry mobile and provide us with multiple uses. I really hope you like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment down below. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for the thing you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.